So Christmas is finally here, and that means it's time to revisit some old holiday favorites. I always enjoyed Nickelodeon holiday specials, and they played a vital role in getting my child self into the Christmas spirit. I think we can all agree that Christmas Who is a timeless classic, along with everything else they used to air. But aside from what was on TV, you could indulge in the Christmas spirit by playing one of several Spongebob Christmas games on Nick.com. So let's fill ourselves with holiday cheer and check out some of these. The first one is called Spongebob Snowpants, made by Sarbakan Game Studio. They're a beloved company in the Flash game scene, and I often have high expectations for the games they make. Even at the title screen, this one just oozes that sweet Sarbakan energy. Their games have a very specific feel to them, it's hard to explain. Right away, the instructions don't do much in the way of helping. It's hard to accurately describe how this gameplay works. You're being pushed to the right, and you have to hit the spacebar to move Spongebob against the current. You do this to roll a big snowball with the snow on the ground. The snow clears up as you take more of it, and you beat a level when you fully create a snowman. They're in the image of your friends, and they look pretty cool. I'm sure this is satisfying to a lot of people, watching the snow slowly disappear beneath you, but I wish the controls were easier to navigate. It kind of feels like you're fighting with someone else to make Spongebob go one way while they're making him go the other. Also, for some reason, many Flash games use these weird laughs in place of Spongebob's actual voice. Hey! Hey! It might be a matter of rights and what sound clips they're allowed to use, but it's strange because you often hear them in different games made by different companies. Maybe they're from a library. There are also a couple obstacles you have to avoid, such as pufferfish. Later on, Plankton comes in rocking a lumberjack getup. I wonder how he tries to stop you. Okay, that's intense. That flamethrower would probably come in handy with stealing the Krabby Patty formula. If you start running out of snow, giant balls come down and toss more on the ground. The stage isn't over until you've picked up most of it, and it does kind of feel like the stages drag on for longer than they should. The conflicts are easily avoidable, you really just have to keep fighting the current that pushes you to the right. Hey look, I'm gonna make an 8. Yeah, a real figure 8. Now it's a... caterpillar. Kinda. Use your imagination. The game is decent, but the controls are a bit strange. But you know what this actually reminds me of? This is the perfect simulation of what it's like to push something with four wheels, but one of the wheels is busted and you have to fight to get it to go where you want it to. If that was the feeling they were going for, they sure succeeded at emulating it. So let's move on. This is a popular one called It's a Spongebob Christmas. No developer was given for this one. For all we know, it could have been Santa Claus himself. Or Working Man, they made everything. This was based on the stop-motion episode by the same name, which was praised for its unique animation. The story involves Plankton turning everyone into jerks by giving them a special fruitcake. And here I thought we just pretended to like the fruitcake. The game follows the same premise, so you have to turn all the jerks back to normal by singing. You click and hold the mouse to sing, then you drag it over the jerks to turn them back to normal. But avoid the jerk tonium and the coal. Also grab presents as they fall for bonus points. Eventually, you have to face a boss, but it's really easy to beat it. This robot Spongebob hails in comparison to the one from Battle for Bikini Bottom. The gameplay is really simple, it's really just something you can do to pass the time. I also love it when you get a game over and everyone still looks really happy. I guess there's no losing when you have the spirit of Christmas inside you. This is pretty good. Now let's check out a few games by This Is Pop. This company has a good reputation as far as Spongebob is concerned, but their non-Nickelodeon works can get a little unusual. They're mostly known for their incredible Atlantis Squarepantis Square Off game, also known as the Spongebob version of Fire Emblem. They also made a few Halloween games, but they were really straightforward. You just kind of did one basic thing and that was the whole game. Aside from Spongebob, they have an expansive catalog, but some of their other works are... questionable. Such as the PETA Pokemon parodies. Yeah, those are some unflattering additions to their resume. But let's see what they made for Christmas. This is called Winter Runderland. Pun aside, a more appropriate title would have been Winter Jumperland. The background music is reused from Atlantis Squarepantis Square Off, but I don't entirely hold it against them since they didn't seem to have the biggest budget here. The SpongeBob model is also the same as it was in their Halloween games. This and Ghost Slayer were both made to celebrate Spongebob's 10-year anniversary, which they remind you every time you get a game over. In this, you click to make Spongebob jump from building to building. You get a point for each building you jump to. That's really all you do. So this is Pop, and what have you done?
there's your Christmas pun of the year. But if you just want something mindless that won't pose too much of an unpredictable challenge, you can give this a try. They also made another Christmas game the same year. It also reused music from Square Off and has the same SpongeBob model as this one, so I guess these games can be considered siblings of sorts. This is called Squidward's Sneak Peek. SpongeBob and a very blurry Gary are trying to steal a present from a very crispy Squidward. It looks like SpongeBob is animated while Gary and Squidward are ripped from existing images. You have to click and hold the mouse to make SpongeBob sneak toward the present, but stop holding it whenever Squidward turns around. Most of the time, I don't even lose if he sees me right away. He's very gracious with how much time he gives you. I don't entirely mind it because there isn't any on-screen indicator of when he's about to turn around. I also love how Gary has absolutely no reason to be here. He just follows you the whole time. Imagine if I just edited Grace next to my avatar whenever I showed it. It's not bad, but it seems like it would work better as a minigame and a much bigger one. It's kinda ironic how This Is Pop released one of the most detailed and shockingly complicated Flash games I've ever seen, only to make these really basic Spongebob games after it. Did they use up their entire budget on Square Off? So let's move on to the next company. Let's look into the work of Indigo Entertainment. They made a bunch of games for Nickelodeon, but they aren't as widely recognized as companies like Workin' Man or Sarbakken. That didn't stop them from creating four SpongeBob Christmas games. I guess they get the title as the honorary SpongeBob Christmas developer. Someone had to fill that niche. This first one is called Postal Panic. It doesn't give you any story information before throwing you into it, so you might be surprised to learn that you play as the bad guy in this. You control Plankton and use a claw to steal people's letters to Santa before they can reach the post office. You can also steal from the main characters, but they're harder to reach. You can even steal from Karen. I imagine that won't end well for Plankton when he gets back home. If too many fish reach the post office, you lose. But if you enter the secret code mail, you get a second chance. This one's okay, but it does take a while for the difficulty to kick in. The concept is also unusual. This is an official SpongeBob game where the goal is to ruin Christmas. Was this developed by the Grinch? But it's okay, because in this next one, you're trying to save Christmas. It's called Operation Holiday Hero. You're in Plankton's lab where you collect presents and shoot snowballs at robots. Or maybe not that second part. The snowballs are essentially ineffective. The screen is moving and SpongeBob is constantly running, so you only control the buttons to fly and shoot snowballs. You lose a life if a robot or a jellyfish touches you. When you lose your last one, it takes a long time for you to die. You can even get points if your body lands on a present. If you like side-scrollers like this, this might be worth giving a try. The next Indigo creation is Gifts A Go Go. The instructions tell you to click and drag the right present to the right person, so let's give it a shot. Oh, we lost already. Does anyone want to explain to me what just happened? Okay, so the instructions are a bit vague. They don't mention that you're supposed to give people the packages that match the color of their outfit. I mean, the arrows here are color-coded, but I don't think most people would notice that. Other than that, it's satisfying to throw the gifts to everyone. You just click and drag to slide them out. Not much to it. I like it when the tower falls. So we have one Indigo game left, and we've certainly saved the best for last. This is Gift Lift, and once again, you play as Plankton. Someone at Indigo Entertainment must have really liked him. Again, you have to ruin Christmas by stealing the gifts from Bikini Bottom. Okay, yeah, the Grinch definitely made this. To do this, you have to draw the ground by moving the mouse. Then Plankton can ride his sled over it. It kind of reminds me of Line Rider. You can't get too creative with it, but it's fun to make ramps and high drops for him to ride into. You have to avoid the red jellyfish, so whenever they appear, that means it's time to make a ramp and launch Plankton into the sky. Oh look, there he goes. But if you lose... <laughs> That loud crash is so unexpected, it actually made me laugh the first time I heard it. But yeah, this one's a lot of fun. The last company we'll look into is Smashing Ideas. We've previously looked at their party game, The Race to Goo Lagoon, which was basically a mini Spongebob version of the Block Party series. It was good. This one is called Merry Mayhem. It seems like it doesn't have any background music at first, but just you wait. Once you hit play, you're met with a trailer for Jingle Brawl. Oh, please no, not again. I've already reviewed this game twice. Though I will be doing Reef Rumble next video. 
Wait, that's a spoiler, forget you heard anything. So unlike in the other Christmas games, this one has cutscenes. Plankton is sending robot carolers to the Krusty Krab, his most dastardly scheme yet. Mr. Krabs then sends Spongebob to the roof to defend the restaurant by hitting the robots with snowballs. The cutscene implies they're coming to steal the Krabby Patty formula, but whenever they reach the Krusty Krab, a meter labeled Noise fills up. So are they coming to steal the formula or just to annoy the customers? You click on the robots and power-ups to throw snowballs at them, and the entire time you get to listen to this. How's that for background music? The power-ups include a reef blower that allows you to rapidly fire snowballs and a Gary clock that slows the robots down. You can also hit jellyfish to sting robots in its vicinity. If too many robots show up at once, you can hit the spacebar to summon a blizzard and wipe them all out. You can do this three times, and then you have to collect snowflakes to get the ability again. Ironically, the biggest issue with this game is that it's too easy. None of the robots can even reach the Krusty Krab unless I deliberately let them. Your noise meter fills up really slowly, and power-ups last for a long time. If you want something that's simple, or an excuse to throw snowballs at carolers, this might be the game for you. It's amusing. The last one we'll check out goes hand in hand with it. This is Frosty Fling. The carolers are chasing Spongebob, so you have to help him run away by skating to fish on ice and dancing with them so they launch you to the next fish. Then you go from fish to fish, sometimes meeting another character. Larry's great because he'll just throw you clear across the map. You can even knock Squidward over. If you lose, you have to join the robots as part of Plankton's caroling squad. Somehow I feel Spongebob would be enthusiastic about that. This is pretty fun, silly as the concept might be, though sometimes you do end up just floating around waiting for a fish to show up. That adds to the challenge. It's also nice to see Plankton's scheme only involves finding a new singer for his choir. Maybe it's evil because he makes you sing bass and you just have to hold one note the whole song while everyone else sings. So that concludes this holiday extravaganza. As we can see, there's a good variety of games to choose from here. Nickelodeon always makes the most of the holiday season, and it's nice to see what these recognizable developers had to offer. Spending your Christmas with Spongebob makes the holiday just a little jollier. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.